You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. This is episode 105 of the Wisdom by Wessa show on the Horse Radio Network. This is Mike Donnell. I'm Casey Wilbanks Coletti. And this is Sophia Aguilar. Welcome to Wisdom by Wessa on the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. This podcast is brought to you by the Western and English Sales Association, WESA, which provides the world's largest trade events for retailers, manufacturers, and sales representatives of the equestrian industry. In this podcast, we feature exclusive interviews with noteworthy Western and English personalities, retailers, and exhibitors who you've always wanted to talk to. Don't miss out on all the news for manufacturers and retailers in the equine industry. Sophia, I saw your recent Instagram post about the August WESA dates. Can you share them again here with all of us? Yes, it seems like people are eager to get a show space or a batch for the next show, the August show, probably just following the excitement from the January show. So just that everybody knows you haven't missed a deadline yet. The exhibitors can start signing up on March 31st, and then the buyers can also get their badges starting on May 1st, and both are going to be available on our website, which is wessatradeshow.com. Great. And what's happening at WESA until then? The WESA team is staying busy as always. So Amy and Tracy are working with our board of directors and planning the upcoming board meeting. And then Jeff is finalizing the contracts. And as always, he's busy helping people sign up for new memberships. And then I'm in charge of marketing and we're currently concentrating on branding with a focus on just storytelling and the community overall. With a hundred year old history and now over 100 episodes of Wisdom by Wessa, I can only imagine that there's more stories to tell. Yes, exactly. So many great stories after each and every show and every year, but just storytelling as a whole is actually a great marketing tool for us as an association. And as everybody knows, Wessa is where the industry meets. So the community around Wessa is just truly a special one. So it does help to um, brand that and market that. And we just want to make sure that everybody just feels the appreciation. And of course, all of our listeners are part of that community. So thank you. Lorinda Van Nuker tells us that her latest award is one she's been trying to win for years. Her booth at the recent West of Trade Show in Dallas was named Best Decorated Exhibit in the Show. But Lorinda's impact in the Western fashion world has been quite extensive. It started out in California when she began a portable retail business selling tech. Then she moved to jewelry. Later, she co-founded the very well-known Gypsy Soul brand. And today she's selling socks. She joins us today to talk about how to build brands and build businesses. Lorinda Van Newkirk, welcome to the Wisdom by Wessa podcast. Thank you for having me. I feel very honored. Well, listen, we're glad to have you. It's our 105th show. As I mentioned in an introduction that I do on the show notes, you've got a great deal of experience in building brands and businesses. And uh, that's really what we want to hear from you and your expertise. I recall you started off selling tack. Uh, a portable marketing business out in Southern California. From there, you went to jewelry, and I'm not going to take it much further than that because we want to hear your story. <laughs> well, it's just it's called grinding and hustle all these years. Uh, yes, I started out in, with a mobile tack trailer in college and went into jewelry for day spas on the Central Coast and then made my way to Texas. God's country. All my California family's going to cringe when I, they hear me say that. Um, but, uh, and then uh, started uh, with Gypsy Soul, the bling craze flip flop rage that we ran with um, myself and Amy Morehouse for about 13 years. And we sold that company in 2015. And since then, I've just been helping a ton of people with their businesses on things you know, mistakes or things, you know, that they're stuck in a rut. And then uh, in 2020, the fall of 2020, just launched Lucky Chuck, which is a logoed brand and a amazing sock company. And everybody wants to have lucky socks. 
I mean, we all need lucky socks. There is <laughs> no, no doubt about that. I have to say, I'm surprised it's taken us 105 episodes to get you on here. Because if I think about a woman in business that has been a staple in the Western industry forever, it would have to be you. No one's ever going to forget about the gypsy soul rhinestone flip-flop craze ever. I have to start with saying, what has kept you motivated all these years? And like you said, grinding. Uh, it's just, you know, when I get an idea and the challenge of building something, I, I love, I, and that's what, you know, I love helping new small businesses or, I mean, it could be a, a new big business, whatever it is, but the, the challenge of seeing it grow and the struggles and all the obstacles, I, I, I'm a true problem solver and I, I just love that challenge. And it's, it's funny when, you know, people will hire me and they're like, you know, this problem happens and this keeps happening. And then our supplier runs out and I have to remind them, this is the nature of the business. And if you can't, uh, love this part of the process, you might be in the wrong business because that's what, you know, that's what makes this business fun to me is every day you're going to wake up and it could be a whole new huge problems. I mean, I can remember one year, Amy and I were doing a huge photo shoot in Fort Worth. We've got all these models here, there. I mean, two photographers and I get a phone call from one of our suppliers. We were supposed to have a whole shipment, a whole container of flip-flops coming in from China. And they were calling to inform me that week when we were supposed to receive them. The factory never made them. They were never made. <laughs> we're shooting for fall and I have no oh, shoes. No. At least like well, oh, certain gosh. sizes, you know, your best yeah. selling sizes, eight, nine, you know, I'm like, uh, you know, and it's, yeah. we survived it. You know, you just, you, you, there's just always something, but the challenge of the business is what I, I do. I just truly sure. love it. And it's probably a sick disease. <laughs> That's really good advice. I mean, honestly, not in just this category of life. I mean, I'm I'm relating it to being a mom and the complaints I have. I'm like, well, it's just it comes with the territory. But um, yes, yes. you can't crumble under pressure. But I, I guess I get loaded question. You you say you you know you've liked the challenges. It's kind of off topic off topic a little bit. But what is maybe like the number one challenge that usually comes to you? <laughs> well, in a personal business, it's always cash flow. I mean, sure. that's, I mean, anybody's good. That's, I mean, that's probably the biggest thing. Um, a lot of people that I, you know, consult with, it's, you know, just getting out in front of people, selling more product, visibility. Um, and, you know, when a brand does take off, it's, you get all the orders and then you're back to the cash flow situation. So, I mean, yes, that is a loaded question because, <laughs> It's, yeah. it, it all, it's like a puzzle piece and, you know, yeah. you kind of get the edges put in and then nothing fits for a while. And then, you know, something else will fit in. And that's like this year when I've been trying to launch these socks for over two and a half years and could not get any supplier to understand what I wanted. They kept wanting to, you know, do cheap printed socks. And I wanted a amazingly made fitting, great arch support, uh, moisture wicking, just a great sock that's going to fit and withstand girls that are out riding in, you know, hundred degree weather that yeah. when they spend money on a pair of socks, they're going to last and not being able to get them right. You almost, you know, want to quit and just be like, well, maybe the stars are aligning or God's telling me I'm not supposed, to, I'm supposed to just go this route. And you really have to, you know, listen to yourself, listen to your gut and stay intuitive of what you want to do and where you want your brand to go. And so many people, you know, they, those challenges, they let them waver them or where they want to go. I mean, you want to always be able to pivot and change and use your head, but you know, there were so many times I just was like, well, maybe I should just do a printed stack and just be a price point. And I'm so glad I didn't because you know, now I have this amazing sock. There's nothing else in the market like it that has great designs, great quotes, and it's made from hemp. It's just, it's you, you, huh. so you've really got to, you know, be true to yourself when these challenges hit you. And that's, I feel sure. a lot of people will let themselves waver on that. So it's interesting. Anytime you, you, 
uh, even say you go to a business course or something, they always say um, you need to pick something that you're going to market or sell that solves a problem, basically. So now I have, I now have a sock problem in this slight little amount of time I've spent with you. And now I need Lucky <laughs> Chuck socks, obviously. <laughs> and um, ones that, okay, here's my biggest problem. They slip down in my boots. If I wear something thin yes. enough that feels comfortable in my boots, they slip down yep. in my boots. Can't stand it. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah, no, we've solved that problem. That's, that's, I mean, they don't fall down. They don't rub your pinky toe, you know, cause I can remember going in and getting my dad's boot socks, you know, or trying nylon socks. Cause some women, you know, a lot of women still wear like a nylon sock with their boot. And then yes. as women, we have fashion boots and we have Western boots and we have booties. And so depending on, and if you're in, if you're, you know, a wholesaler or at market, you end up buying samples that really don't fit. So you have to adjust your socks, but, and there's certain boots, you know, I have to wear certain socks with because of how they fit. But my everyday great fitting boots that I ride in every day, I wear a pair of tennis shoes when I work out. I mean, it is so great because you can scrunch them down and they look cool with a Azure, you know, your workout outfit, or you can pull them up and wear them with your boots and they stay up. So it's been, I mean, it's, it's just so amazing when you finally find the right manufacturer and they understand what you're wanting to do. Yeah. It's great. Awesome. So let's, let's yeah. break it down. Let's talk about all the components of your sock. You mentioned that it was hemp, um, just, just, re and, and, uh, breathable and moisture wicking and all those things break down all the points of your socks to us. Uh, well, they're, they fit great. They have great arch support, um, no toe line. Um, the cut, they, so most fun socks are a print sock. They're not actually stitched. So we're just, they're not laying a sock down and just printing it. They are, you know, actually stitching the pattern in the sock. Well, other sock companies will do, you know, stitch the sock or sew the pattern in it. Well, then they end up with all the strings inside and then your toes get caught in the strings. So we don't have any of that issue, anything like that. And then what's really cool. So people are like, why did you pick hemp over wool? Well, hemp yarn is stronger than actually wool. So they're going to last longer and do mm -hmm. more better things for your feet. And then the other thing that is really cool, the factories that I've, um, and the, the sock manufacturers that I've partnered with, we use sock scraps and uh, material scraps from other factories. So we're, you know, reusing things that should be, other people might think are trash. So mm -hmm. we're not just throwing away stuff. We're actually reusing it into a great product. Right. So interesting. I, when I, when I look at, there's so many ways I can go with this, but when I, I look at your stock, I immediately try to think of retailers coming to the brand wanting to carry your brand and you have to immediately go to marketing. This is something that you have carved a niche in for very many years and you don't just get a great product with you. You're if if you're going to retail your socks, you're going to have a really nice avenue of marketing. Can you talk a little bit about um I don't I don't know, maybe the best ways of marketing or what you help your retailers with in getting this product out to their customers? So, with Gypsy Soul, um it was I mean we didn't really know, I'm kind of going to do a backstory here, but with Gypsy Soul, we didn't really realize what we were doing right in the beginning. I mean, we knew we were making a cool shoe and people liked it, but what we really tapped into, and if you can do that with a brand, is actually calling that emotion out of your people that are buying your product. And we would get letters after Gypsy Soul, you know, started re re checking at retail and people were actually getting it in we would get emails and letters from women that would say, you know, I've gained a ton of weight after having kids, or I, I don't feel pretty. I wear black all the time. But when I put on a pair of gypsy soul shoes and I go to the grocery store, people notice me, people talk to me. It made them feel important again. It what, however, that blingy huh. flip flop, what it did yeah. for people was the most amazing thing. And so I, you know, and I tell people, you've got to find a, an emotional connection for people to buy because that's how they're going to buy. Right. So if it's just a price point, you're, you know, nine ninety nine, whatever, then you're, that's all you're going to be. But if you, you know, going to have a, an actual staple brand, you know, you've got to connect that emotion. And, and when I, 
with Lucky Chuck, you know, the name, I all, everyone always wants to feel lucky. There's always just something people are drawn to the word lucky, the spelling of the L. I just always loved it. Both my grandpa's name are Chuck. My daughter's name is Charlie. I just, that, and I was supposed to be a Charlie. So that name has just always been embodied around me. Uh-huh. And it just felt like it went together. Um, and so, but I knew I always want, I want, when I started the brand, I wanted it to be a sock line and everyone does what has a pair of lucky socks, wants a pair of lucky socks, and they want to feel a part of something. And I want people when they buy these socks that they feel like, oh my gosh, the whole lucky Chuck brand crew is rooting for me right now. When I put these on and my friends that wear lucky Chucks, we're rooting for each other. And then secondly, for retailers, you know, with, with, Gypsy Soul, I was selling three to five to fifteen hundred dollar flip flops. So not everybody could afford that. That was not it wasn't gonna happen, even if our average customer had forty two pair of these shoes. It was insane. <laughs> yeah. Um but but that's what drove the earrings, the t shirts, the jeans, the purses, because not everybody could afford the flip flop. With this when I recreated this brand, I wanted something that I didn't need an employee that I could ship it from a distribution warehouse that it wasn't here in my home. So I could get away from it because of all the mistakes I made with my other brands <laughs> ruling my life. Um, and I wanted something that re- any retailer could fit in their store. My display takes up a 20 by 20 inches spot in a store that is a, t- that if they want to do the full investment of $2,100, that is a huge return on that small area. Thanks. And the other, uh, the other thing I wanted was anybody can buy this product for somebody. Grandpa could buy it for his granddaughter. Grandma could buy it. Uncles could buy it for their nieces. Dads could buy it for wives and not feel bad they bought the wrong size. It's, <laughs> it's across the board. It is a easy gift to give. And you yes. can decide, do I want to spend $50 and buy two pair? Or do I want to spend $100 and buy four pair, you know, so whatever, cause I always look at people want to be under $50 sale or under $99. So either way they're getting, you know, a good, sure. they're getting something they can give. And then I've never given a pair of those socks to somebody that's like, why are you giving me a pair of socks? They're like, <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love socks. I can't, I'm going to, I'm going to put them on right now. <laughs> That's because they're there. Like Lorinda's giving it to me. It must be awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. But you talk about your crew and um, let's go there because nothing says heart and soul more than a mom and her daughters. And this is something that you've, I don't know if the right word it partnered with your daughters on this brand. So it it was partnered with my daughters, um, in, in part, and they are part owners of the company. Um, but being sisters, my youngest daughter, she doesn't really want much to do with it because it has her sister's name on it. And the others, and my oldest daughter's up at OSU and she's a sports media major. So she, like, she came home this last weekend and we did a big photo shoot for, um, the two next two launches. So she models and, and helps where she can, but it, I, uh, you know, I don't think this is going to be her passion. Um, I know the Western industry is her passion, but I don't know that the sock company is her passion, but I've, I've always been a mom that I want to put the opportunity in front of them. Um, they have to do their part to, to make money and be a part of that part. <laughs> um, but I want to, I just want them to have an avenue that if they don't want to go get a job at, you know, a regular job in town, they can come work in the business or, you know, nice. have contacts, you know, and it's even, it's been so fun because my girls were so young when Gypsy Soul ended. So they don't really remember right. any of that. And it's so yeah. fun to go, like when they go to WISA and they're like, Oh my gosh, your mom and Amy used to walk around in tutus and they did this <laughs> and they did that. So, you know, it's, it's been fun for all of our friends and the people in the industry just to have them involved in the business, you know, it's, it's been, it's been really great. So technically, yes, it was to work with them, but you know, they are teenagers. Oh, I, yeah, I understand. Touche. The, the heart and inspiration is there. And 
besides socks, uh, there there's other things: hats, tanks, tees, sweatshirts. Yes. So more to the brand. Yes. Yeah. We we I went ahead when I didn't still couldn't get the socks right. I I launched the logo stuff just so the brand you know the brand had some name recognition. I am sh- shrinking that part of the business. I don't. I don't want to be a hardcore t-shirt cap brand. I will continue to do some, but not at the magnitude that I was, you know, just, just a small sprinkling of hats and t-shirts and then just full steam ahead with the socks. And it's fun teaming up with Lucky Chuck. Uh, You are, you're known to empower women um, and maybe not just women, but empower people in the Western industry, yes. especially, especially in the fashion sector. And um, I think when it, it, you mentioned this before, but being part of something, it's always easier to go in with somebody or a brand that is so passionate. It's so easy, so yes. much easier to run with something when there there's passion behind it. Yes. Yes. A, a reason. It's just not a, a dollars and cents. And that's, you know, I, I, uh, I, I don't, I wanted to mention too, I, we are co-branding with, um, Jody that owns French scarves. So she's another powerhouse in the industry that's been in, you know, in and out of the Western industry for years. So we're doing socks that look just like her scarves, her best-selling scarves. Oh, Wild cool. Rex. Yeah. Cool. So it's been really fun to be working with her too. And timeless, right? You're, we're always going to need socks. Yeah. We're always going <laughs> to wear scarves. Scarves, they're never going to go out of style. Never. No, no, and not in Texas when it's cold either. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, before we have to go, I I don't want to not, I I don't want to leave this out, but best in show. This is something you've been striving for and you got it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a total shocker. So I have been trying literally my whole career at NFR, retail booths, everywhere. I have always (laughs) went over and above decorating my booths. And yes. trying to win that. And one year at Dallas market years ago, we did, I did win it with uh, gypsy soul, which was a complete shock, but I mean, it never even crossed my mind being in a showroom with somebody else that I would even be, you know, considered. I mean, yes, I still decorated my booth as if we're all out and I want it to be, you know, to be merchandised and just have that amazing feel when people are in my space my little 10 by 10 space inside my <laughs> showroom at Brooklyn Haven. But it was, I mean, just thank you guys. That was just such yes. a, I, I'm still just speechless. That ribbon will be up proudly forever. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Well, congratulations. Yes. They say big thank things come you, in small you. packages. Your socks come in a yes. small retail space. So <laughs> there's yes, that. Right. But long-term relationship with WESA. Before we go, uh, uh, what is being a member of WESA meant to you? Well, it's, I mean, it's really cool to have that there's an actual market of us Western wholesalers and how we put ourselves out there to the world and having, being a part of something that we all have the same goal in mind and promoting and helping each other to get retailers to come. And if we don't have that, you know, how are we going to reach all them? And, and, you know, they're getting so much, you know, people are always pounding at their door to try to sell them stuff, but we need them to come to one central place and shop and buy. And you guys be the people or the organization that says people that are with us is who you should support and buy from. And that is huge as as a wholesaler. Well, on behalf of myself, Mike, Sophia, the whole WESA crew, thank you for not only joining us on the show today, being a longtime member, a wonderful brand that we are so happy, you know, that you're a part of our association as well. And just thank you for your time, your contribution to the Western industry. And we just wish you luck moving forward. Thank we you. know you're, you're not yeah. done. You're, you, who knows nope. what brand you may have after this or what thing you might <laughs> dream up. No, next, so. no I, I have, I have squirrels running around in my head. I got, I already got ideas for other stuff, but we got to stay awesome. focused right now. Socks, socks, socks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. The show notes and links from today's show can be found at wisdombywessa.com. And of course, we'd always want to hear your feedback. There's a contact link on that website. The Wisdom by Wessa show will be published on the 15th and 30th of every month. You can listen on most of your favorite podcast players, and you can also listen on the Horse Radio Network app on your iOS or Android phone. 
You just search Horse Radio Network in the App Store. It's free and super easy to use. Be sure to visit all the great shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Thanks for listening to the Wisdom by Wessa podcast. Wessa, where the industry meets.